Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to session 66, where we're going to today be reviewing 10 trades that I took over a 20 minute period. So it was fairly fast trading. Now, I'm going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. That is, I made some mistakes, which I'll explain. So stay with me because I promise to give you some valuable information on how to day trade successfully. Now, $1,000 a day, not enough for you. Increase your position size, and we'll discuss that in a moment. First of all, there is a risk in trading. Of course, you're watching a recording, so please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer. If you haven't already requested my free uh, ebook for truth about day trading uh, please click on the description link below even better still become a member that is for $197 and I promise this will be a very quick advertisement you get all of my indicators over 200 hours of training there's um, over 35 powerpoints is nothing else like it and I have a bonus going at the moment see I run a live coaching room and I run a live trading room so you can also attend eight of my live coaching sessions so every Tuesday and Wednesday evening 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time I run two-hour coaching classes on how to successfully day trade if you can't uh, attend the live session they are recorded and after the first month should you decide to continue drop me an email and you'll be able to continue for $97 a month and I've got over 200 traders that attend these sessions so uh, they're valuable so all for only $197 to join click on the link below now let's get into this so this was uh, trading five lots okay so I was trading five lots in 20 minutes and as you're about to see it wasn't a flawless day yes we can look at this and say yep great day 16 15 gross after commissions 1406 however I made a couple of errors and you know I could have done much better but I want to explain what they are I mean anyone can show you how to trade with the trend and that's if they're game enough to show you actual live trades but here I show you the good and the bad because it's how you learn so in a moment we'll go to the live charts I'm going to show you how I draw a channel in a couple of ideas on channels then I'll discuss uh, as I mentioned the good the bad and the ugly now before I get there one thing I do want to mention is that you'll see me quite often pull up these uh, spreadsheets and it's important traders that you have a goal and you set a realistic goal now you can actually click on the description link below and get these spreadsheets free of charge and you can actually put your own figures in however what's absolutely critical trade is that we follow our two percent rule and in this particular case I want to show you that starting off with a three and a half thousand dollar account and targeting 200 a day within 11 weeks you have got the potential of earning ten thousand dollars a week consistently now with this spreadsheet you only actually start trading a second contract when you double your money so once you go from three and a half to seven once you go from seven to what's that <laughs> 10,500 you start trading your third contract so this is very realistic for a focused trader now you should be able to easily do this most times of the day within uh, around two to three hours maximum you'll see most of mine I achieve in well under an hour however I've been doing this now for 28 years now what is important also I wanted to point out here is that uh, on the NQ now I'm referring to a Renko chart but you can apply this to any type of chart whether it be time based whether it be tick uh, volume based uh, is the tick size or the stop size my apologies so to stay within the 2% rule it means that I can have or you could have up to a $70 stop loss which on the NQ is 14 ticks okay now if you've got a smaller account size of course you can uh, lower your stop but that can be problematic as well in getting whipsawed and stopped out now what if you don't have 
I'll show you our uh, three and a half thousand I'll show you uh, what else you can be doing in a in a moment now also this is trading the four tick Renko now that's mighty fine during the Globex session but once you get into the New York session you'll need to jump up to either if you're trading a Renko chart up to uh, probably about an 8 to a 12 tick uh, chart now what this means is I only need to go for six scalps oh sorry my apologies four scalps a day now you'll see in today's session I actually had to execute 10 now I was also up about $1,400 so my target typically is $200 a day per contract now down here what if you don't have that three and a half thousand start on the micro and what you actually do is go for $20 a day rather than the $200 a day within 11 weeks your account balance is up around 4400 that's when then you can roll over and start trading the big contract so you start on the micro and then within 11 weeks you can start trading the big contract now within 22 weeks you got the potential of earning ten thousand dollars a week and the potential and this is where I do want to say this traders get rich slowly and that is so many traders want to get rich quickly they'll risk five and ten percent ridiculous amounts uh, percentages of your account size um, there's only one way to master the uh, the art of day trading and that's the right way the first time and now thanks to the micro contracts they're not subject to the uh, pattern trading rules um, uh, most brokers now uh, or actually all the good brokers of course are highly regulated um, it's a great spot to start now what if you do have three five ten fifty hundred thousand even consider starting on the micro for your first couple of months make all the mistakes you're going to make then you can switch over and start trading the big contract now before we get to the charts a couple of things here oh, and just one thing where will you be in 22 weeks uh, um, time from now that is you can do this okay you can master it. it ain't rocket science but it comes down to really putting in the screen time and following a rules based high probability strategy the shame of it is most traders want to get rich quick and they won't put the work in in fact um, the only place in the world where I know where success comes before work is in the dictionary you've got to put the effort in all right moving along couple of things here that we do need to consider um, and this will make a massive difference to your trading we want to know where our pivot levels are now if you're not familiar with pivots open high low and close levels your intraday swings the current days high and low this may be a foreign language to a brand new trader but trust me it's really quite straightforward there's nothing really behind this when I say nothing behind it I mean with some simple training you'll soon learn what these are and the great thing is with almost all modern trading platforms these can be plotted automatically uh, on your screen that's the purpose of my live trading seminars uh, or webinars I should say where I'm training you how to trade into these levels you see these act as what we call price magnets and also as support resistance levels and we bounce off them these are very very important they're easy to learn but critical to your trading so in this particular case this is over 20 minutes now in fact a, a major error I made today was actually when I was actually trading I failed to realize that the Frankfurt market was about to open now that's uh, 2 a.m. Central Standard Time so uh, you can of course trade uh, 23 hours a day for futures markets and so during the after hours markets the advantage of that it's a lot slower however we've got to be very careful when we uh, trade around market open hours why because the market can move very quickly anyway we'll see that in a moment now at the end of each day we've got to apply what we call black box thinking and what do I mean by that well we know what a black box is in an aircraft that's where investigators after an, an error an accident they'll go back and review what was said on the flight data recorder um, 
um, from a technical point of view and to check whether there are any errors made by the pilots now we have to do the same thing now when it comes to trading winning traders are willing to do the things that losing traders won't do most of the things I show you here today we are losing traders won't do okay that's that's the challenge is it doesn't take a lot more work but it's critical at the end of the day we go back and review our trades if it's not an 80 20 trade that is as a scalper as a day trader I'm looking for the highest probability trades now where I let myself down on uh, this that is sometimes as you'll see I took a couple today that weren't 80 20 because I was distracted or busy um, or, or I took a phone call or whatever and so it's important that we look at this now fortunately because of my trading experience I can have a number of losses and I'll soon pick them up again and come out in front okay I'm right most days uh, however I always look at what can I learn from today all right so let's get going with the lesson first of all I just want to show you how to draw in a channel now we've got what we call um, standard channels but then you've got hidden channels now with this particular uh, case what I actually saw was this I saw A to B setting up so um, and then I look down at C okay and so I drop my from A to B then down the C now what then happened is price then came down bounced off the lower channel and if you're trading with the trend you want to be selling the high of a downtrending channel now channels probably only form maybe three or four percent of my trading but if I think I've got a reversal or a nice channel setting up I'll drop it in and this is where I made my first mistake of the day now it's still a great trade however it could have gone against me and that is I am um, short of five lots here now what I was looking for was what I call a channel overshoot I it hit the channel once hit it twice quite often and you can see it actually I had the overshoot here so generally speaking when you sell the high of a channel generally going to find support so that is a great spot to cover your position to exit your position so I hit that and what actually happens and and what how my rules work traders is when I'm five steps in I call these steps one two three four five um, on my ATM I automatically go to break even and typically unless I'm going for a larger target I'll go for seven steps and I'll show you where we'll go for larger targets in a moment now what actually happened I went to break even and that would have come out and stopped me out however I was looking for an overshoot so I put my stop loss back up above the top here and you can see this then came back up and basically I was three ticks from being stopped out and I re-entered uh, another position now with both of these then I exited well first of all I readjusted my stop and I basically got out with both of them within the channel and lo and behold we actually um, uh, this is the overshoot I was looking for up here so uh, that was a bit of an error I made I really should have taken profit on the first one and even the second one I might have been pushing my luck now trade three was very very straightforward uh, was um, uh, we call these a rule of 134 B I'd already tested the channel broken the channel we came up and away I went thank you very much so on the way down now this line here okay so that um, uh, what's that magenta uh, color there that is the low of the day and this is where on that little checklist I showed you, you want to know where the high of a day and low of a day is because we bounce off these levels and it's um, uh, can be great for divergence now usually what I will do I'll uh, increase my target by a couple of steps because these become what we call price magnets so so if you're going for a fixed target in this case of 16 ticks okay that's $70 by the way per contract on this market I could have easily gone for 90 to $100 on this one um, the markets moving fairly quickly and I failed 
to notice at the time the low of a day was just there now then we came down and I had a setup called a t3 which is right here now with a t3 it's um, what we call a reversion to the mean trade okay and I jumped in on this trade and I was stopped immediately now the other error that I made this was the Frankfurt open so really I I teach my members to really stay out of the market the first five minutes and so I was in it uh, well I got stopped on that trade and I then took what I call a 2d straight after which um, turned into a, a nice winner so I stopped on this one and then I had a, a nice I call it a 2d with some nice divergence off for low now some of your best reversal trades divergence trades will be off a pivot a pivot bounce off your major EMAs uh, or off the high and low of the day so when you've got great divergence and you've got a pivot bounce okay that makes it a high probability trade a higher divergence trading is always trickier now that little blue line you can see there that's the prior days open so I got stopped on the first trade jumped in on the 2d and thank you very much and this is where then I made uh, really it was quite a blunder and the markets pumping so one minute later uh, I jumped in on this one and this is where I say to members um, look trading a fast market can be fun sometimes but also dangerous to your account now once again I got the experience where I'll usually recover um, from a bad trade but the the mistake I made with this one was quite a major one that is see that's a 200 EMA now if I was still to pull up what I call my anchor chart my higher time frame what I actually had was my higher time frame in a major downtrend and uh, uh, the entry chart was in a downtrend now when I took that I took that as a rule of one entry and I was actually looking to get up to the uh, 200 EMA up here above now the markets moving very quickly now that is where when you've got a very fast moving market uh, you're much better off staying with the trend so I, what happened then I basically got stopped out of that pretty much immediately okay so I stopped out of that and from there then I jumped in on what I call a t7 now a t7 now that was a poor trading decision a, a, sorry not a t7 let me get it's trade seven my apologies uh, I don't have a script I run to by the way when I do these videos traders so if I make a blunder you'll have to excuse me so this is trade seven okay and I got in uh, late on this one was not filled until down here was moving once again look at the, the markets really moving had a heap of slippage now this is where then I just want to quickly talk about stop losses I like to have my stop on the NQ if I'm uh, below an eight tick uh, chart I like to have my stop one tick above the closest swing or one tick below if I'm trading an eight tick chart or above or say a 144 or a 233 tick chart uh, I like to have my stop on the NQ two ticks above or two ticks below and the reason being we tend to get a lot more um, the NQ is can be very whippy okay we used to call it the nasty NAS I've reframed that to what I call now the nifty NAS just trying to well really give myself a better attitude towards it because it can be a great market uh, and I probably said this it doesn't matter which market you trade what I'm showing you here the same patterns appear on any market now with the stop loss if ever you get in late and I used a market order on this one I'd, I'll just leave my stop at the 14 the 16 ticks or whichever time whichever uh, stop I'm using for that day now at the moment I've got a trading strategy where uh, on the NQ4 tick where my stop loss is only 12 ticks maximum now what that means is I can trade a lot more contracts um, uh, so that's another that's another video again but anyway if you're in a runaway market my stop will be down here I'll just leave it there if I've got momentum behind me otherwise I've got to put in a massive stop 
and see down here we've got the lower day so there's always a good chance that when we take these we can come down and we can bounce and here you can actually see I exited uh, at the low um, uh, got out with all of my contracts at the low of day now usually and here I got out with only one tick above the low so usually um, uh, of what I call front run I might try to get out two ticks beforehand now because I had momentum uh, I then jumped in on what I call a rule of one entry and I mentioned to you once I hit five steps so one two three four it's, it's actually five down there I automatically go to break even plus three ticks now the problem with the NQ uh, can be after hours you get a lot of slippage so basically I got stopped out of that the commissions were covered but basically it was a break even trade and what I really should have done here is is locked in more profits why because when you hit a low of day and I took this uh, see how we punch through the low a little see how we punch through the low you usually then get a rebound so you want to really lock in or trail or lock in as many as much in profit as you can um, anticipating a reversal now so I could have actually instead of getting out of break even I could have picked up a couple of hundred dollars extra out of that now with the second one this was actually a loss and this was not a great trade so the market as I mentioned this is all within a couple of minutes here okay the markets really moving I jumped in on this one and I had another I sold again at the low of day what I was also selling into was divergence now what you've got to learn traders is see this over here see a price is angling away from the moving averages that's called angulation the greater the angulation the more likely you are just to have a deep pullback especially when you've got divergence on your indicators now Newton's law is where there's a reaction there's an equal and opposite reaction it's not always true but generally is in other words if you've got the market moving strongly very strongly one way it'll quite often then rotate back in the opposite direction now I sold it once here and very little if no divergence now what that means is if ever you've got a trade and you've got no divergence, like this one up here I also had some divergence with the trend and basically a little double top with divergence with the trend fantastic but with the second entry I was now starting to get some divergence so I took that one and I was stopped out of that trade immediately again now um, what's the lesson there well I just shouldn't have taken that entry okay the first one I had no divergence the second one I had divergence and I was pu pushing my luck anyway because I had a lot of angulation now I then pulled back and I then had uh, trade 10 thank you very much and in this particular case I went for a larger target on this one why I had lots of momentum um, and so in this uh, um, so that's what we call a 2b that was a 3b up there by the way so 10 trades six wins one break even three losses now two of those losses really were just plain errors on my side so uh, I could have done a lot better in and on this trade so on uh, on this trading day so still a net of 1406 now there was something else I was going to say about that now what was it and there was uh, just another by the way another classic uh, to be and I don't remember what I was about to say anyway traders so um, oh, I know what I was going to say what I recommend initially you stick with trading with the trend now overall uh, counter trend trading CT trading is very good to me but I've also been doing it a long time time okay now there was by the way there was a really nice CT trade I should have been on and um, so but I was in this uh, this short trade which I shouldn't have been in and I missed the CT trade but the opposite can be true as well so if you just stick with trading with the trend initially 
remember it's not about the quantity of trades it's about the quality of trades and the question to be constantly asking yourself traders is it an 80 20 trade now over here I want you to also notice something very important we were rolling over we'd had a nice rally up note this here we had a slightly lower low now I've got a lower high lower low lower high that's a footprint to a trend um, or to a new trend at least kicking off do I have a series of lower lows and lower highs so once again traders trading doesn't have to be um, rocket science what you need is the right coaching the right support you can be a pure price action trader you don't have to use the indicators however where indicators come handy is this if you're a pilot flying in cloud you can't see a thing okay you could be flying almost upside down at times and not know it slight exaggeration but that's where your indicators come in and the important thing is that most of the indicators that I use such as when we're looking at this uh, using the open high low and close levels the pivot levels your major EMAs uh, and the current days high and low they become what we call predictive indicators because so many traders trade them uh, in other words you've got say if you're selling into a pivot level uh, with the trend if both your entry chart is trending into a pivot and your anchor chart one your higher time frame you've got around a 90% chance of hitting that pivot if you're within a certain distance of that pivot it's no good if you say 100 ticks away or 100 points away and you're pointing towards a pivot okay there's a distance that I've discovered that works really well where it becomes what we call a pivot magnet trade so traders um come and join me okay yeah uh, click on the description link below you also get eight two-hour sessions and if you wish after your first month drop me an email and I'll send you the paperwork to then uh, continue with the sessions remember successful trading is really it's a journey and what you want to do is have a coach like myself or have someone behind you um, coaching you which basically saves you a huge amount of time and money anyway enough of a sell I'll see you on my next video come and join me and if you do I'll see you in my coaching sessions thank you traders